everyone, this is Daisy and today I am going to be sharing a very personal video that I actually wanted to share a long time ago. Just felt like a little bit weird about it. This is going to be my egg freezing process. I froze my eggs last year and I wanted to tell you guys my experience, my thoughts around it, kind of a reflection back upon it. So this video is gonna be divided into three different parts because I really wanna like say so much about the whole thing. Um, I don't want this video to be like an hour long. So the first part of this video will be kind of my thoughts behind it leading up to the procedure. The second part of the video will be the actual procedure itself. And the third part of it will be just kind of my reflection and you know, kind of thoughts about it a year later. I froze my eggs when I was 30 years old and I'm almost 31 now, but obviously there were several years of me making this decision and thinking about it and the decision was a lot harder than I expected. And also when looking through a lot of YouTube videos or resources, there wasn't much online. Like, like there's very, very few people who make videos about it, I feel like, or maybe it's not a popular thing, but I found so many, you know, pregnancy videos, even IVF videos, but I didn't find much resources on egg freezing. I felt like there wasn't like a real honest commentary about the whole process. So this is what I wanted to share and I'm just going to be as honest as possible and this is my life, my story, um, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of judgment from here, especially from men. <laughs> when I was younger, I always thought, you know, I wanted to be a mom. I've always wanted to have kids. I was a single child, an only child, up until I was 12 years old. So I would always wished for a younger sibling to be, to be like my best friend. I didn't really have any friends growing up but I was kind of a loner all my life, so I always wanted to have a sibling. And then my brother was born uh, when I was 12 years old. He and I are still very, very close, and I love him so, so much, and I treat him almost as if he's my child because we're so far apart in age, and so I kind of took the role of like, you know, like a babysitter mom for my brother. Since then, I've always known I wanted to have kids. I've wanted to have like two to three kids. <laughs> I say when I'm like 55 years old, when I become, you know, a billionaire or whatever. I want to adopt like 30 kids from all different the world and have like a hundred animal. I don't know if that's allowed, that's probably not allowed, but I've always wanted to create that kind of family and that community that I never had. So I always knew like, kids was always in my future. I never dreamed about getting married, having a beautiful husband. That stuff is like secondary. I always wanted to have a family and have kids and to kind of see people grow and develop. And that has been very, very satisfying for me, even at Vanish. Like I, I love seeing people like grow and develop into themselves. When I was 22 years old, I had like lunch with a anesthesiologist who was like significantly older than me and she said that she just had like her kids and she just said, this was a long time ago, it was like almost 10 years ago, she said you should think about freezing your eggs. It's like putting more coins in the parking lot meter. And she talked about how a lot of her friends couldn't get pregnant or they just had run out of options in terms of IVF because they didn't have enough eggs. And honestly, like at 22 years old, you don't think that it's hard to get pregnant. You don't think that people have issues. You don't hear about it. So I always assume like, yeah, like when the time is right, you're gonna have kids and it's so easy, you know, and all that stuff. And that was kind of the first time I actually heard that people have issues with their fertility. In my 20s, I didn't really have like a long-term stable relationship. I had relationships that all lasted under a year. I'm in a relationship right now. I've been in a relationship for three years, but in my mid 20s, I didn't really have like a stable relationship. And I always got feedback from guys that I was too success oriented. I was not feminine enough. I wasn't motherly enough. I wasn't nurturing enough. Like I always felt like the reason why the relationships didn't work out was maybe the guys didn't think I was like womanly enough. And it really affected my confidence and like, oh my God, like, is that true? It's not that I panicked, but I was just like, whoa. You know, when you're 27 years old and in the previous relationships you've been in, the guys are telling you that you're kind of thinking, maybe there is something like not motherly about me. Like maybe I'm not gonna be a good mom. Maybe I'm too success oriented. Maybe I'm too ambitious. And I just became very, very insecure about my gender identity because I felt like at 27, I saw all my friends getting married, having kids. And I felt like, when is it gonna be like my time, my turn? Also during this time, I started Banish when I was about 23, 24 years old. I was very, very young when I started Banish. And at this time, when I was like 27, 28, 29, Banish was really, really growing. It was consuming all my life. I would be traveling a lot for conferences and for networking events. I like literally didn't have time to do anything else but work. I didn't do any domestic duties. I wasn't like cooking. I wasn't, you know, cleaning. I wasn't doing any of that. I just felt like, oh my God, like this is not the right time to have kids. And then when I looked in the future and I looked at the goals 
that I set out for myself and for the company, I was like, when is it gonna be the right time to have kids? There was a somewhat anxiety of not knowing when the right time would be. Even though I was in a relationship and I still am with the same partner, I was always like, I don't wanna be so reliant on him for him to be like, yeah, let's have kids, let's get married, let's do all that kind of stuff. I don't wanna be reliant on no one, you know? And I never knew what the future was gonna hold in terms of any, and I just felt like out of control of this invisible clock that was ticking all the time. Honestly, I was very, very secretly envious of men <laughs> because I knew a lot of guys who are around my age who were in a similar situation and I saw them traveling the world, literally hooking up with like a girl in every single area code and not having to worry about settling down, being in a serious relationship, you know, worried about the biological clock or whatnot until their 40s or even 50s, just like, you know, George Clooney or Leonardo DiCaprio. So I knew it was gonna be a different story for me versus for the guys and I felt very envious of it because I felt like I would love to just be able to like, you know, my 30s and 40s just completely focus on my career, but because I knew from a very early age that I wanted to have kids and that was my huge priority in life. I knew I'd have to make different choices. So there's just all these like weird feelings that I had and a lot of like anxiety and social pressure. My mom would kept telling me about like issues with infertility after a certain age and you look at all the studies of you know miscarriage rates, fertility, Down syndrome, all that kind of stuff. fertility exponentially declines after 35 and here you are like 29, 30 years old and you're like I have five years like a lot of shit can happen in five years and so I never wanted to feel like I had to do something just because time was running out or I never wanted to not have my dream of being a mom in that sense these were all the feelings of like why I wanted to go with the procedure in terms of like trying to figure it out when I was about 28 years old, I went to an event and it was sponsored by my alumni Duke Women and it was talking about fertility and we had this like world-class OBGYN who was an alumni talk about fertility and conceiving and all that kind of stuff. It was so interesting because it really brought to my eyes that like it's actually like not easy to get pregnant. People have a lot of issues and she brought that up to me. She's a fertility doctor, I think, so she sees all the worst case scenarios, but I was also like, whoa, like just because I, let, let's say when I'm 38 years old, just because I wanna have kids doesn't mean that it's gonna happen for me. And then she also said that during IVF, one of the biggest concerns is that the woman doesn't have enough eggs to produce to actually make the embryos. So she actually recommended like, if you're young, you should freeze your eggs. So I was looking into it. And I also wanna say that I know that I'm very, very lucky to be in a financial situation that I can afford to do it. And it's a weird like catch 22 because the reason why I need to do it is because I work so hard on my career. I should have the funds to be able to do it. It was weird because like when I told, I was really surprised how unsupportive people were. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> when I told some people like a little bit older, they were like, why are you doing it? You're so young. I felt a little bit like judged from people. I felt like certain women would judge me maybe because they felt like, oh, well, you, if you want to prioritize your career over having a family like is that the right thing to do I also felt judged by other women maybe because they can't afford it or something and I also felt judged maybe by older people because again I was making this decision to delay motherhood and all that kind of stuff I also felt a little bit judged by guys in the sense that in the sense that maybe on the outside they say they're all rah 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 for women's equal rights and women's empowerment but Deep down inside, I felt like they judged me because maybe they feel threatened that in the future that women will be on their equal playing turf because we have this reproductive technology that allows us to delay motherhood and so therefore men and women can be on our playing field and an even playing field in our 30s and even 40s. So I was actually really surprised on the amount of kind of judgment I got and I think that's why I hesitated to make this video because I was very, very open about it until I actually told a lot of people they were like kind of judgy about it. One question I got was like, why are you doing it? You're so young. I was only 30 years old. And the reason why I wanted to do it is because the quality of your eggs at 30 is gonna be better than the quality of your eggs at 40. So for each period that you get, basically the quality of your eggs declines just a little bit. And so I was like, well, if I can afford to do it now, I might as well just do it now and get it over with instead of waiting when I'm like, 38, 39 and not maybe having the best quality eggs, you know? My boyfriend, he thought it was very, very scammy, the whole thing. He's very like, 
like analytical, practical engineering, like science based, he was like, it's a scam, they're gonna rip you off. There's really no scientific evidence that there have been live births from frozen eggs. And that's actually true. If you look on the research, there's been only, I think, 2,000 live births from frozen eggs. And that's like, really really tiny in comparison to like everything else that's going on and also there's really no scientific evidence or like no successful babies of women who froze their eggs for this reason because the women who did freeze their eggs no one is like using them now you know because it's such a new technology i think it's only been around for like five to ten years but like it's getting more popular now and it actually had an experimental label on it I think not too long ago. So it's very, very new technology. Nobody really knows if it works or not. And a lot of people think that these fertility clinics are trying to poke at women's fears and anxiety of their biological clock and like really profiting from it because it is very, very expensive. So I will be honest and tell you how much it is. So I believe it's about 10 to $15,000, depending where you are. I know in New York City, there are fertility clinics that just specialize in egg freezing and the cost goes down a little bit to like maybe eight or 7,000, but I think the range in the United States is about 10 to 15,000. I paid about, I think 12, 12 ish thousands altogether. So definitely, it was a huge, huge investment. I had been saving up for, I mean, I knew I wanted to do this for a long time. It's not covered by insurance, so you basically have to pay for everything yourself in cash, even things like testing your AMH levels, which tests the ovarian reserve, doing all the blood tests, even like testing for hepatitis. B or C or whatever, HIV, you have to pay for that out of pocket. Your insurance doesn't cover it and it gets really, really expensive over time. Even the medication that you take, which is like, it's like almost blasphemy how much these drug companies can charge for a tiny little vial of something that I know probably doesn't cost them anything, but like every vial of medication costs like $500, $700. You'll hear my second part of my story, but I actually messed up on like giving myself shots. So I actually had to buy another vial, which is like another $500, you know? So for, and the vials are like super tiny. They're like really tiny everything is super super expensive plus the egg storage costs range anywhere from like four to eight hundred dollars a year I mean it's just crazy like the expenses behind it unfortunately I do think they are priced that way because they're not covered by insurance and that these fertility clinic can prey a little bit on the very career focused women who focus all their lives on making money and becoming successful and ambitious and then at the age of like 35 they're like crap like what do I do now okay spend money on egg freezing and all that so I think there is a lot of uncertainty around if it's really effective and there's a lot of criticism behind it because a lot of people say it's a fake insurance policy let's say I froze my eggs and I got 20 of them and then I, at 42 I want to use them and you realize it actually doesn't work like the amount of eggs that are frozen to the amount of eggs that are able to be thawed to the amount of eggs that are able to be fertilized to the amount of eggs that are able to be fertilized without any genetic defects and be able to be implanted into you and then for you not to miscarry and not have any like defects along the way like it's very 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 small probability at the very end and nobody really knows what that like that ratio and that percentage is so it's all about percentages and you know what if you're you know 42 years old you want to use the eggs and you get zero plug births from it, you know? So it's it's a very risky gamble that nobody knows if it's gonna work out. It is incredibly time consuming. It is somewhat painful. And then I also read online and don't read stuff online too much because you're gonna dig yourself into this rabbit hole. But I read online that I think doing IVF or inserting those kind of fertility drugs you know, actually increases the risk risk of like ovarian or breast cancer, if I'm correct. And my mom had breast cancer and I was just like freaking out, like, oh my God, if I'm gonna get breast cancer, blah, blah, blah. Like, blah, do I really wanna do this? Like, is this really what I want, blah, blah, blah. So I was actually going on and off about whether to do it or not, because on one hand, it wasn't necessarily the all the other investments behind it, but it was just like, am I gonna ruin my body by doing this? Am I going to, make myself feel like I have more time over something that I actually don't? Is it gonna be like an insurance policy that says they'll cover things, but then they actually don't? You know, like, do I really wanna take a risk like messing up my like lady parts down there? And will it mess up like me and my like fertility in the future and all this stuff? I mean, I just had so many unknowns and so many questions and my parents were, you know, they, they were against it. You know, they, they're not very familiar with like technology and IVF and all that kind of stuff. I also remember going to having like this female entrepreneur dinner and one of the women there, she was I think 39 years old and she went through like two or three rounds of IVF. She spent at least six figures 
in IVF and she was just like, if I were to do anything different, I would have frozen my eggs when I was your age because her issue was that she wasn't able to get enough eggs for the treatment. She said it would have saved her a lot of money and heartache down the future. And hearing her say that and seeing you know, where she was then and actually she has a baby now, which I'm super happy for her. But just hearing her say that to me, like heart to heart, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna stop like reading into these fears, reading into these like, like these clinical journals of like getting cancer and all that and just go for it. <laughs> and I'm kind of the person when like, I'm kind of indecisive, but at the same time, I'm very execution based. So I was just like, okay. So I went to a clinic and I'm not gonna say the clinic's name because I don't know if I would go back honestly again. Like, I don't know if I would recommend it so much, but the reason why I went to this clinic was they actually had an opening for November to December. So for this whole process for egg freezing, you need to take a significant amount of time, not off work, but you need to be in the area for like at least a month because you're basically going to the clinic every single day and it's a huge part of your day. You know, it's like you have to, you have to take at least two hours out of your day to drive to the clinic park, do your blood test, do all that, come back, all that kind of stuff. I went to those clinics simply because from November to December, I wasn't doing any traveling. You guys know I travel a lot. I'm always out of town, all that kind of stuff. So that was the only time I wasn't traveling and that was the time that they had available. So that was kind of like my overall thoughts on why I wanted to do it. Again, I know people are gonna be judgmental and all that kind of stuff, but to me, this is something that I wanted to do for myself. It was something that I wanted to do selfishly for myself. I felt like a lot of things I did in my life were for other people, you know? I felt like I, felt like I wanted to do things to make other people happy. And this was something that I wanted so badly in my life that I wanted to give myself this gift. So now I have some eggs frozen in a cryobank. <laughs> it was definitely not like an easy decision. It took me a couple of years to kind of get my head around it and actually schedule the appointment and make the deposit and all that kind of stuff. But I actually did do this right before I turned 30 and I wanted to give it to myself as like a, a gift for myself before turning 30. And I also felt like, you know, I'm a very innovative person. I feel like Banish is very innovative and this is very new innovative technology. And if it does get better and if it does become almost a foolproof way for women to delay their biological clock, I see it really changing the gender equality and really changing the gender relations in the world in the future. I mean, if you think about it, birth control really changed the sex and the dating revolution, right? <laughs> if this egg freezing thing works out, then it's really going to change men and women in the career. I felt like it was super cool for me to be a pioneer in this, for me to be part of something that is so new and so unexplored in terms that, you know, it actually might change the world in 20 or 30 years. And I don't know, I'm just thinking like maybe like in the next 20 years, if I have a daughter and she, and like everybody's doing it, like it might be super normal for like a girl when she turns 18, 20, 25 to just like freeze eggs and just not have to worry about it. Maybe like, you know, in the future, people just freeze their eggs, freeze their sperm. They will be sterilized. And then when they want to have kids, they'll just start doing like test tube kids or I don't know, like, I don't know what the future holds, but I thought it was kind of super cool to be a pioneer in something that hasn't been crazily well researched, you know? I'm very proud of myself for doing that. So thank you so much for watching. This video it was super rambly, I know, but I had, I mean, there's a lot of emotions and thoughts behind it. And for the second part of the video, I'm gonna be talking about all about the procedure, how I gave myself a bajillion shots in my belly, and also the time I had to give myself a shot in my butt of a needle this long and like this thick and just slam it in there. That was probably the most horrifying experience. So thank you all so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey soldiers, it's Daisy, founder of Banish. Did you like this video? Please give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and don't forget, Banish, we got your back. Bye.